Hey everybody, this is Jordan. <clears throat> I'm here in Las Vegas and I've got my friend um Amberly Shreve on with me. And you know, we were having a conversation about four or five days ago. And after listening to Amberly and what she has going on, I'm like, Amberly, would you mind being a guest on a Monday night? And she goes, Sure. And so here she is. She's got a lot going on in her life right now, but she is here with us and she's been uh, number one, this is a big deal. She's been number one in the 10 card challenge, um, in terms of gathering new 10 card challenge customers for four of the months that we've been doing this. And we haven't been doing it that long. So that's a big deal. She's a star three gold and Amberly, would you maybe just start and let everybody know a little bit about your background and what brought you here? Sure, Jordan. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I truly appreciate it. And it is such an honor. Um, so my my story is, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a journey. And I started in corporate America over 22 and a half years of um, really being harassed and degraded. And I just wanted to really pursue my purpose and passion and um, really find myself again. So I started networking and on a networking event, I met Sean, I was actually doing insurance and finance at the time. And Sean said, well, why are you doing that? And I said, I have no idea. And we talked about cards and the beach and how we were going to change people's lives. And that is really that is really it. Um, Did you the meet rest him in person? Something. Did you meet him in person or at a live? I event? have never met Sean in person. It to has always been to this day because he was not able to go to um, a prosperity. So we are going to meet in person in March. Oh, good. Oh, good. Sean's going to be there in March. That's great. Yes. Can't wait for that. So, How cool yeah, is I'm that? All right. Well, I told everybody that we we're going to talk tonight about networking, onboarding, new customers, upgrading, um, and then, you know, doing it with some intentionality. You're a busy person. You've got a lot going on, but you always seem to make time. In fact, every time I talk to you, it's like, how many, you tell me you've got like 12 appointments on your calendar. Like how many appointments do you do a day? Uh, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 10. Um, it it kind of depends. How long do they last? Uh, sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. Wow. It, it depends on how far people want to go. Sometimes they're only about 30 minutes and then we're going to do a follow-up. And so this, sometimes go ahead. There, sometimes there are referrals and people are ready to go. It just kind of depends on the situation. So you can see Amberly's taking it to a new level because doing 10 appointments a day where every appointment's 30 minutes to an hour, that's a lot of time right? That's a lot of time. Most people aren't going to do that, but that's what it takes sometimes to be number one, right? So that's what I did for many, many, for a number of years to be able to be number one was to work really hard like that. In the beginning, you get paid, um, you get paid not so much money in the beginning for doing a whole lot of work to get paid a whole lot of money later for doing almost nothing. That's mm -hmm. kind of how it works. So where do you find all these people? So several places, uh, networking events. I I do usually attend um, somewhere between three to five networking events. A lot of times I'm invited to different networking events and I try to attend them when I can because, you know, if someone asks me to go, I mean, of course I want to go and meet new people and support them. So um, it's also relationship building. Uh, I mean, we, you know, my, my daughter plays travel softball and we just booked a uh, hotel to the beach and the woman talking on the phone, she's like, you know, I, I work in hospitality, but you know, I used to have a marketing business. And I said, really? So tell me about that. Take me through that. I mean, people are just really looking for opportunities. So it's, it's networking, it's having conversations, it's taking time to be a part of someone's life. And it's not in any particular area. It's not just a line of bullets, not just LinkedIn. It's not just social media. It is 
you taking the time to really connect with someone and love on them and show them that you actually truly care about what's going on in their life. So I imagine a lot of what you do is listen. That's exactly what I do. You ask questions and you listen intently. Mm -hmm. And so like the woman, like a lot of people would have missed that woman that was in the travel business. They would have missed that opportunity because they're just so busy doing their life. They didn't stop to listen to what she was saying and then respond to it. Absolutely. And yeah. I have really um, taken anticipating people's needs to the next level. So I am, I'm very, very good at um, not only listening, but hearing the challenges and being able to act on those and say, okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit and take me through that journey because that is, that is the way that you can break things down and really figure out how you can bring value to this person. Let's say you met me at an, an online alignable event and we have this conversation that goes really well. Um, mm -hmm. You've learned a lot about me. I've learned a little bit about you. Uh, you you've decided based on what I've said that uh, that the 10 car challenge would be perfect for me to take. Do you ask me right then or do you set up another appointment to do it later or and what do you say? I would ask you right then. What would you say to me? I would say, hey, Jordan, you know, based off of what you've, what we've talked about today, I, I would love to show you an opportunity of a gratitude challenge that I'm running right now. I think it would truly bring value to your business. And here, let me show you, let me demonstrate what this would look like for you. And so what, what do you demonstrate at that point? Um, I, if we were in person, I would just show you on the phone or if, you know, if we, if a computer was available, of course, but I think the phone is much easier. Uh -huh. I think it, um, really sparks curiosity and yeah. it, uh, I mean, for people to just look at a phone and be able to send a card, that's, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not every day that you look at someone's phone and you're able to send a card from your from your cell phone. So do they watch you send a card or do you have them send a card? No, we usually do it together. They usually send it, but I will help them walk them through. Okay. So you might even say, let's get you set up. It's 20 bucks. And then I'll walk you through sending your first card. Very simple. I guess it depends on the situation. And, yeah. and once you're in, you kind of get in the groove and you Hey, you know, let's, let's go through this together. I think this would be an, an incredible opportunity for you or here, let me show you how easy it is because anybody, it really is I'm very simple. If anyone has questions for myself or Amberly, drop it in the comments. I'm kind of watching the comments here, but as we're going through this, if there's something that she, that you feel like would be helpful for her to share based on what she's explaining here, um, drop it in the comments and, uh, anything that you think might help you, um, I believe, Amberly, and you tell me what you think. I think anyone can get to a week. Absolutely. It's just having a conversation and it's it's listening, it's it's sharing, it's building a relationship, and it's meeting someone's yes. needs. That's really yes. what it is. And then also you've got to put yourself in situations where you're around new people. Absolutely. Yeah. And so and that... I want to be clear, you know, m the meetings that I have each week, these are not just 12 meetings a day. It's hardcore in, you know, Shreveville. I mean, that's real. That's not how it is. I mean, I, Callie talked to me last year about time blocking and making sure that I was intent. I was very intentional because I was overwhelmed. Right. And in order for me to provide um, a, a, a space where I'm able to grow and be able to take the breath. I, I do have to be very intentional with my time. So there is a planning day, you know, in the afternoons, there, there is strategic planning, what I'm doing that day, follow up and all of these things, because I mean, it doesn't stop. How, do you, are constantly... how are you staying organized? How do you remember people? Okay. So that is a great question. And believe it or not, um, I, use several things. Number one, I have a very good memory and I remember mm. each and every person. 
Wow. I don't know how I do it. I really don't, honestly. I don't know either. Because I remember I, I remember hardly anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so I also write down all of my people for my 10 card challenges because you know I, I'm I'm not gonna remember all of those people to follow up. So I, I want to make sure, but if I have met someone and I need to follow up with them, I remember who I need to follow up. And then I keep a paper calendar and I do that on purpose. A lot of people like digital. It, it's all in what you like. It just, it's easier for me to keep track of those things. And then when we do a 10 card challenge, I will highlight um, that particular person. They will go on the list if it's a package, they will have a highlighter for another one. And then that gives me um, an opportunity to put them in my calendar to follow up for, for um, additional packages and things that I need to send to them throughout the year. This is helpful. So um, you are, you are you using old school um, systems for keeping track and there's nothing wrong with that. It works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mm -hmm. do that. You can make lists of people and you can use highlighters and you can write down what they bought and when you need to follow up with them next. And you can keep that in a journal or on a notepad. That's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, sometimes I think it's better than doing it online because a lot of stuff we put in our online systems kind of disappear. They kind of, you know, so I want to answer a couple of questions that people have. And if you want, if you want to chime in on any of this, let me know. Uh, sure. Carlene asked, um, so do you have them send a free card on your account or do you have them open their own account on their cell and then send their card? So they will open their own account. And uh, typically I don't have people send their, their free card. I, I will, if they're, if they're brand, brand new, but most of the people that I'm meeting with, they, they're they excited to to participate in the 10 card challenge. Um, so I'm gonna... not finding a lot of people that are just doing the free card. Yeah. So Carlene, what, and I, that's what I would have said. Same thing is like, I want to get them set up on the 10 card challenge. It's only $20. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. like they have to think about it. Either they're in or out, you know, either they want to do it or not. And most people say yes. Exactly. And, what, and, and it, then then you, get... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that in order for them to um, have a routine, it's really important, especially someone who's new, you need to get a routine down of being able to send cards and get really familiar with the system. Because if they are not all in and in love with the system, then typically they do not continue. And that's the piece is once you really show them they have a routine down. They know who they're going to reach. They they understand the concept. Then they're really going to touch a lot of people's hearts and their lives. And that is the importance through all of this is relationship building and um, serving and helping others be an expansion of themselves. What do you, you know? what do you ask them or say to them uh, to decide who to send their first card to? So I typically choose a loved one. Um, and if they don't have that particular person in their life, I will say maybe a client that you just sold recently or someone that you've had a meeting with that maybe are on the fence. And this might be the, the card that says, hmm, maybe I will do business with yeah. them. I think maybe your easygoing style probably helps too. So, well, I mean, we're we're just hanging out and we're and we're talking and we're having a conversation and I'm learning about the other person. Yeah. Yeah. I think um because you're a listener and you take time with people and they know you care, that that that's another thing. They're more likely to say, Yeah, let's do this. I want to do this mm -hmm. with you. Uh Tim Stone asked the question, and I'm gonna answer it and then see if you want to add anything. Um, so he says the first time you meet somebody, is that too early to introduce the 10 card challenge? And I, my answer to that would be, it, it depends, but probably not like mm -hmm. it, it's definitely not too early, but a lot of it will have to do with the relationship you build with them in the time that you're talking to them. So mm -hmm. if you're bringing the 10 card challenge to them and you have zero relatedness with them, 
they're probably going to turn you down or start asking a million questions. But if you have a conversation with them and ask them questions and really listen and see, see in that, in that dialogue, what needs do they have that could be fulfilled by through our philosophy and our program, then they're going to be, yes, sure. Any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had, uh, I'm relatable. I've had a lot of things happen in my life. So when I speak to um, different business owners, whether they're their dads, moms, their um, what, what, whatever they're doing in their lives. I mean, I, I have, uh, I've worked in corporate America. I've dealt with a lot of different people. Um, I've worked in construction. So I, I, there are tons of people that, um, you can be relatable to if you give yourself the opportunity to listen to them and just understand, I mean, we're, we're all dealing with life and a journey through life. And sometimes people just need someone to listen and understand and yeah. have some compassion for them. And I think that's a huge piece. And I think it really helps to bring your relationship to a new level. Do you send cards to the people that set up the 10 card challenge with you? Every single person. How many cards do they each get? Uh, well, uh, it kind of depends on the relationship. I've sent a thank you 10 card challenge card. I've also sent some encouragement. I love all of the mantras that we have now. I have sent those out. And then um, I've actually had a few birthdays for some 10 card challenge people. So those were fun. Um, and kind of whatever I feel in my heart, I send out. So you might send one, you might send two, you might even send three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And somebody asked LM Walters, and I don't know LM, I don't think, unless I'm, I may know, it might be Linda Walters. I'm not really sure. Um, how often do you send gifts from the site? And I don't know if you're asking how often do you coach the, them to send a gift or how often do you send gifts? I'm not really sure. So maybe you can clarify that. Um, and then what about up, what about upgrading Amberly? What about, how do you get somebody, first of all, for every 10, 10 card challenges you sign up, how many of them upgrade to something? like affiliate or one of the packages or one of the packs or a subscription? What percent of the so, town? Um, I'm going to say probably 20 to 25. Okay. Yeah. So 20 to 25% okay. upgrade. Yes. Okay. And what and, do they, how do you get them to upgrade or do they just do it on their own? No. So I've already planted the seed. When we have the conversation in the 10 card challenge, I'm already talking to them about. So the importance of the 10 card challenge uh, is also to not only put you in a routine, but we're, we are setting the stage for what's to come within your business. So once we are finished through the 10 card challenge, then your next step, we can see if maybe a subscription feels good or maybe even a package. And we can implement that into your business, whatever feels good and aligns um, for how you want to send cards out to promote you and your business. Do you, follow, so, do, you, do you schedule a follow-up after they sign up for the 10 card challenge? Uh, there are times that I do, but... With most people, I've already built that relationship, so I just text them. Okay. So you might text them and say, how's it going? How many cards have you sent? Do you need any yeah. help? Usually, usually uh, every five days or so, I'm texting them to check in. And you have your list, right? You have your list. And I, I have my list. So yeah. I'm texting them every five days or so. And so far to date, I've had, um, I think I only had one a while back overall i've had about 10 10 or less that have not done all of their cards that's that's not very, that's, that's a small that's a a good percentage of the people that you yes. sign up have sent all 10 of their cards yes and i went back because i thought that that was an important piece to share because yeah. i i'm not sure 
I think a lot of people, oh, I can't do this. You know, it's not going to work. But um, I think if you if you go through and the follow up piece is huge. And yeah. I think that's why I was able to um, get that far with them, because that follow up, it's constantly reminding them because until they get a routine down, it's just like at the gym or eating habits or things like that. You have to stay in front of it in order to be successful with it. So how often are you getting referrals from customers to, to sign up? Are those coming in? Uh, they they do. Um, I usually get, I don't know, maybe. A couple a week. I get about. Well, yeah, five. I would say one to two a week. Yeah. Yeah, I usually get one or two a week, sometimes three. Yeah, yeah. one or two a week. Uh-huh. About yeah. average. So if you do one or two a week, that's almost two a week, you know? So it's like, yeah, once you get the pipeline filled, that's mm -hmm. part of it. It's like, once you fill that pipeline, it's just what we teach, right? And you're building mm -hmm. relationships with those people, then the referrals start coming in. Mm -hmm. um, well, and it was interesting because in, in August, well, you well, once we kind of rolled into the holidays, yeah, those, those transitions were a little harder because people are, they're, they're really, there's a lot going on with the holidays. People are really busy. They don't want to commit to certain things, but um, people that did take the 10 car challenge, I started to see an uptick of them um, converting over more in like the end of December, January, yeah. because it's the start of the new year and they really want to start the new year off. Yeah. Um, so, right with their business. Um regarding upgrading do you, how do you breach the topic of affiliate and when do you breach the topic of affiliate so i'm usually listening to what they're asking okay if they're asking certain specific questions like well what would this look like for me or right. what else what else is involved Talk yep. to me a little bit about, about how you're doing things. They'll, they'll say specific things. And then I, you know, I'll just have a conversation say, Hey, listen, if this is something you're interested in, let's have a conversation about it. Yeah. And I do not push anything on anyone. I am just building relationships and it's something that's curious to them. Then we're going to talk about it. Good. Yeah. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll set up a follow-up appointment with them. Like, a week to 10 days after they sign up, mm -hmm. but I'll set it up with them after I've onboarded them. So after I've set them up on the 10 card challenge and had them send their first card in that same meeting, I'll set up a follow-up appointment. And then in that appointment, I'll find out how it go, how is it going? Have they got any feedback? How do they like it? Is it something they think they would refer to others? And if they say yes, then I say, would you be open to considering becoming an affiliate? I did one of those today. And uh, two women that work in a, they make, this is unbelievable. They make a quarter million, this woman who's probably 45 years old, she owns a plant that makes a quarter of a million plastic bottles a month. Quarter million plastic bottles a month. She's got a, her facility is the size of our facility. And she's got machines and chemicals and everything that, and all the cooling equipment and everything that it takes to make plastic bottles that they use for drink for water and things like that. And so oh. she and she and the woman that run runs that run that plant, she's been a friend for many years. They were on a zoom with me. The second one, they both signed up on the 10 car challenge. And then we just had our second meeting today. And I think one of them is going to be an affiliate because we have that That's conversation. <clears throat> so I like that. Sandy, don't be pushy, pull them into the system. That's really good. Let's yeah. see. Um, we got a little couple more minutes. Um, how how um, how proactive are you in terms of managing people? Like, are you managing them, or are you just like, do you just send somebody a link and hope that they sign up, or do you want to be with them when they sign up? Does that matter? So I do both. So there are some people that need a little um, extra attention and we will go through the system, which, which is no problem at all. And then I have some people that will contact me and they'll say, Am, just send it over. I'm good. I, yeah. you know, we, we've talked enough that I'm, if, if I, if I need you, I'll reach out. 
So I've had both. What about, so, so along the same lines, what about affiliates? When you sign up a new affiliate, do you just get them plugged into the system? Do you have a system of like how, how, how much micromanagement do you do on your team members? I do not. Okay, good. Tell me why. I do not. No, because if they're an affiliate of mine, I have taken them through the system. They know every aspect of the business and it is up to them if they truly want to make this work for them. Now, I am always there. I check in and I do check in with, with, with every single one of them. I absolutely do. And we have a, a group um, chat and some other things that we do to stay connected with everyone so that we can all support each other. Um, but no, I do not micromanage my team. Yeah. So like, for example, how many, if you, if you had people in your organization, like Amberly and Sean, how much handholding would you need to give them? How much, how much, how, how, how much guidance would you need to give them? Ver, ver, it, it's like, if you have a group of people, let's say you have 10 people that all need you really bad versus two people like Sean and Amberly that are just going to go out and do this. You know, you want to be there and be available to anybody who needs help, but there's no way somebody's going to make it in the business if they need you to do it for them all the time. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't need, do that. You can't. No, you there's not enough time. Yeah. So the idea there's is to find the people like Amber Lee and Sean and Joy and uh, so many others, George McIntosh and Willie and Donna and find people like mm -hmm. that. Sandy, people that are just going to do this. So we're mm -hmm. sorting to find those people. And like Jimmy and they're says, gonna reach out. what's that? I was just going to say that they're going to, they're going to reach out to you. The, the people that are engaged, they're involved. They very much um, are on board and they want this business to succeed. They're going to make it happen. And if they reach out to you for a need, okay, great. I mean, I, I still do check-ins with Sean. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm learning every day. I want to learn something new every day so that I can be better than I was yesterday. So I still check in with Sean and we have conversations. Yeah, what would you think about that? How do you feel about this? And I still run things by him because I I don't know everything. And you're a team. And we're a team. Yeah. So just final thoughts. Last thing. This has been really awesome. So good. So, so, so Thank good. You. Lots of great stuff. So final thoughts. How, like, when you wake up in the morning and you, you know, you have a day, you got all these different things you need to do, personal things and bit, stuff for your business. As far as the business goes, what, what are some of your thoughts, just general thoughts about how you're going to tackle your day? Like, what do you, like, what's your check, your mental checklist, if there is one? Okay. So the first thing I do in the morning is I usually get up, I will do my devotional and I make our bed. Okay. And then um, I will come out and I try to do my list of things to do the night before. So that yep. way I'm prepared because, you know, we have we have kids that are in school. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of lunch packing and all kinds of things happening in the morning. So um, I, I typically have a list and I like to check the boxes because that's how I am. So I make sure that I. It's, it's, and it's almost, it's, it turns into kind of like a game, like, yep, I'm going to check that one and I'm going to yeah. check that one and that's done and that's done. And it becomes very, um, enjoyable you get and the flow. You go through your day. Yes. It's, it's a easy flow. And I make sure that I, that my list is done as best I can each day. I mean, do I get everything done every day? No, I don't. Right. It's, it's just not humanly possible sometimes, yeah. but I get pretty close. Yeah. And I, I don't know how, um, I'm sure you say the same thing. I, I'm not quite sure how I fit everything in, but I managed to figure it out and I give myself enough grace to move through my day and, um, and make sure that I'm giving myself enough time yeah. uh, to slow down yeah. and focus on the things that mean the most.
That's great. That's what I was talking about. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Good stuff. Really good. Well, Amberly, thank you. This has been a great, great 30 minutes and uh, we could talk for a long time. We could do this for a few hours. I have a feeling. So it was excellent. Uh, thank you for that. Everybody I know appreciates it and I appreciate you and you're a great leader and you're a great business builder and a great person. And I love working with you. So thank you so much. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you. Thanks everybody. Have a great week. Uh, if you need anything, drop it in the comments. Let us know. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Amberly. Have a good night. You're welcome. Good night. Bye.